<laughs> oh, so thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We're just so happy to see all of you. And um, so it's time when I when I come to the community meeting, and I, I got so excited, you know. So, uh, and I when I when I was driving to this place, and I was thinking. Gosh, oh you know, so God, I started the first community meeting 24 years ago. And uh, in my first meeting, I had, I think about 10 people sitting there. I spoke 100% pure Chinglish. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe at that time nobody understood what I was talking about and I understood nobody either. <laughs> so, <laughs> we got even in, a, uh, even, in a, even in that way. Um, but people are coming for what? For that unconditional love, that heart connection among us, between us. So that unconditional love and the longing to a certain level of connection. Here we are talking about in higher level of connection from the heart, from the soul level. It's really putting us together. So we talk, and we chat, and we ask questions, and we use all the devices we were born with. Fingers, eyes, head, and yeah, yeah, hmm, you know. So then, you know, gradually, I, we got to where we are. And I just feel so, so blessed for all these years. Today, we're going to talk about distance healing. You might think, you know, this is like a very advanced one. So can I really learn it? Can I really do it? You know, do I have the energy to do it? Do I have the skill to do it? And well, I tell you, healing is so fun and so simple. And I will share with you and what I know about distance healing. Um, and also, we're going to have fun with it. Let me tell you a little bit about my, my agenda today. So the first, about one hour or 40 minutes, and I will talk about distance healing. Then right after that, and I will do a guided healing meditation. You like that? Yes. All right. I haven't done that for a long time. <laughs> so um, then after that, we're going to take a break. And uh, then Liz is going to lead the healing circle, and so we're going to walk around to do healing on you. All right. Well, distance healing seems like a very, very mysterious. Even a lot of advanced Qigong masters I know said you should take at least 20 years to practice, to learn from a master before you can do that. Because you think, wow, distance, far away. How can I detect, know this uh, an energy blockage or illness in others without even knowing this person at all? About family, yes, I know a little bit history about my aunt, you know, my daughter, and uh, so logically I can figure it out that there's something going on in the body. But how about if I don't know this person at all? Just by giving you this, the name of this person, where's the location, man or woman, within seconds you're able to find out what's wrong in this person. Long time ago, when I was healed, I, I healed myself. I completely cured myself with my arthritis in my knees, bone spurt in my lower back, in my neck. And through Qigong, I completely cured my suicidal depression. 
And from that moment on, I wanted to know more about the power of Qigong, the power from within. Then I went to so many different masters, staying in the cave, studying. That was a very, very long and hard, um, uh, interesting experience in my life. And when I look back, and I, I feel I am so proud I went through it. One of the training, for instance, and when you do like a, a distance healing or face-to-face -face healing, and my master said, and you have to do the sword finger spending you know, like this two hours a day. Two hours like this, holding your posture. You're not kidding me? Yeah, I did it because I committed my life in knowing what I want to know. And the master asked me to do it two hours. You know what? I did it six hours. I committed. So commitment is very, very important. Because you trust this is what I want to do. And I remember that time when I, when I was in the mountain, got my first round of training. You know what? At the end of the day, I had a hard time to even move down to use bathroom. In China, when you use bathroom at that time, there's no any standard <laughs> top like what you have. Where you have to bend way, way down and then scroll down and to the, almost to the ground and uh, to uh, do your number one. And, and I mean, uh, yeah, number one, <laughs> number two uh, even. Um, so uh, each time when I used bathroom, it was a killing. The pain in my legs, in my back, is all over, you know. But I went through it. And with that intense of self-discipline with the training, finally I found what I wanted to know. So, today, so distance healing. So, I said, distance healing is fun. How I broke through the barrier of this word, distance. <laughs> Many of my students, when they came to my class, they learned in from level two how to detect energy blockage face to face. That was already a miracle. Wow, boy, so without any modern technology, by holding up your hand, your skin, your frame, your client from head to toe, and then you're able to find out energy blockages inside. Isn't that amazing? There was a lady who just learned this technique face to face, and as she went home, she scanned her dog. She found a blockage which the, the, the vet doctors could not find, and then she brought her dog back to the vet hospital and she told the, the, the vet doctor, you know, I found a blockage. This is the location of the problem of my pet. And the doctor said, yeah. <laughs> so he checked it out. Uh, yeah, that is it. Then another healer of mine, I mean, it's like a spring forest Qigong, and from a, a long distance, he was here in the United States, I mean, uh, in, the, in Minnesota, but his friend was in Italy. And his, uh, the friends had a, a, a family member who had internal bleeding, and the doctor couldn't tell what part of the body was bleeding. So he did the detecting, and he said, well, that uh, bleeding is between the uh, esophagus and the stomach. That was the position, the, the bleeding was happening. And then the, the doctor checked out the, the x-ray again, found that was the spot. 
then the doctor was able to target that spot to stop the bleeding. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody in your home you are so care about, you so love, and when they are suffering in a situation, how can we help out? And with this, you are able to do so much. So now, how I broke through the barrier of this word, distance. First of all, distance, this word, is a psychological. What is called distance? Think about that. So if you want to learn distance healing and detecting well, the first barrier you need to go through is break the word distance. What is the longest distance away between you and me at this moment? The longest. The people who are sitting at the end, right? You have the longest, farthest distance away between you and me. Wow. So if you make a comparison at this distance here, from here to New York, from here to Holland, from here to Marsh, then which distance is more important to you? And do we really have a distance? I ask these questions to myself many times. Then what, what makes distance happen? Because of your height because of your understanding of who you are and what you are. We are in the universe. The universe is in my body. The universe and I combine together. Once you say that, the universe is inside you, and you are the universe, then what is the distance in between you and me, between you and the universe? Actually, there is so too. Our body is the miniature of the universe. In our body we have all the things, information, formation about the entire universe. So now how can we break through that? We need something to connect my heart to this understanding. Um, now I want you to do a game with me. So everybody put one hand up, just like what I do, right? and hold it comfortably. And so now I want you to hold your sore fingers. If you say uh, uh, the thumb against the tip of the ring finger and the little finger and make a circle, and the other two fingers make it straight up, right? very beautiful. Alright, so now what I want you to do, I want you to send, visualize you're sending light to the middle of the palm in your hand, like this. And put it that close together, just a little distance away <laughs> from the middle of the palm. Then I want you to say, send energy, send chi to the middle of my palm. And then you move your sore fingers in a circular way, counterclockwise, clockwise, it doesn't matter. Do you feel the tingly sensation, warmth in the middle of your palm? Right? Feel it? Yeah, we have some music here, so that, that's perfect. <laughs> All right. So do you feel, you, you, you feel, everybody? Okay, you nod your head, so I know you are feeling. Okay, good. So now, let's part our hands away from each other a little bit more distance away. And now move your fingers. Do you still feel that feeling? Yes. If you want to feel more, you can close your eyes and take a few seconds to feel it. Right? So, 
Do you feel the feeling in the middle of the palm? All right, now let's put it even farther away. Wow, just like you made the arrow, right? <laughs> okay, send energy to the middle of the palm. Now close your eyes and relax yourself. It's a little bit farther away from the hand. Do you still feel it? And uh, do, you, do some of you feel that feeling is even stronger? Right? Okay, now let's... Now this is not the fun part. The fun part here is coming. Put your sore fingers to the sky and say send chi to the middle of my palm by moving your fingers to the sky <laughs> cool huh <laughs> do you feel that do you feel the feeling and the feeling is even even stronger cool huh all right now let's go extreme and send, I mean, point your sore fingers to an opposite direction, over there. And you say, send chi to the middle of my palm. Close your eyes and feel that. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Observe and feel it. Cool. <laughs> All right. So. Now put your hands down. So how many of you feel that chi in the middle of your palm? Cool. Now here comes a question. What is called distance and what is called direction? This is how I broke through the barrier of understanding what is called face-to-face -face healing or distance healing. Once you open your heart, once you open your mind to accept who you are and what you are, actually there's a no anything in this universe is called direction or distance. See, in my Qigong teaching, one of the things I talk about what is the journey, how long the journey is of a person's life. If you want to walk a long distance uh, from here to Rome, that might take you two years or whatever more. It depends on how fast you walk, right? About your life journey, it may be like 90 years and 110 years when you walk your life, but a journey from, from the head to the heart, it's only 18 inches. From over here to the heart, 18 inches. Once you understand the knowledge you learn from your brain, your mind, and you understand it from your heart. You turn that knowledge into wisdom. And this wisdom stays in your heart. And this wisdom is going to stay with you forever. Knowledge comes and goes, but wisdom stays. So when you break through the barrier, what is called distance, then you know really from your heart. Ah, this is it. So, at the time when I, when I was uh, meditating in a cave and uh, studying with my masters and uh, different masters, I asked them how long I would do something like what you guys can do and uh, scare the body, even without moving the hands, and you're able to read a person's energy channels and find out where there's a location of the energy blockages. And so one time, you know, so I, I was with the, uh, my, my, uh, there was one master who was from uh, a Shaolin temple, a very famous Buddhist temple, 
and that is the that was one of the places um, the Chinese people consider as the uh, leading temple in the Chinese world for martial arts and for a uh, high level of Qigong training. And so I, I met this master. When I came close to, her, to, to him, and I, I asked him, um, I have some challenges. Can you tell me where I have the challenge? And he said, at the moment you walk in, I already knew it. I said, what? Wow, in this, okay, so tell me. And he said, you had a blockage in your lower back and the two bone spurs in the lower back, in, the, in, in the number, number five and number four. And you also had a little blockage in the neck area too. And then when I, when I, say, I say, yeah, I say, okay, so wait a minute, you have one more blockage, and that blockage is in your lungs. In, that was true. When I was, in, when I was little, my mom told me later on, I, when I, I asked my mom, and I had pneumonia. There was a scar, a scar, little scar in my right lung. And when I uh, did an x-ray later on, I found out, yeah, there was a little scar in my right lung. So that was a so, so just amazing. He just simply blew my mind out off. So I wanted to, to study with him. And when I studied with him, he's, he said, well, the first thing is, you know, every morning, five o'clock, you need to be in my place. And so I was there. I committed. At that time, I was the dean of a college. I got up very early. I rode my bicycle <laughs> and for a good half an hour, and I finished my morning training with him. And then I went. I, I went back to teach. Um, then later on, I studied with a, another different master about healing. He said, well, if you want to do healing, first of all, you need to do the detecting training. Um, the detecting training is, in, first of all, you need to take, take five years to work on trees. You need to feel the different energy in different trees. And then you take another five years to slowly download all this information before you can practice on human. Because if you do that on human at the very beginning, if you make a mistake, um, then you will generate a lot of fears in others. I'm thinking, I was thinking at that time, since I was able to heal my arthritis, my lower back, bone spurt and neck within two months. And I was not a Qigong even a practitioner at all at that time, though I love Kung Fu and Tai Chi and once in a while do some meditation. But I was able through this meditation to help myself to heal. And also in the meditation from distance, I was able to help my father to cure his back pain. And I was able to help a couple of my students with their asthma and some other challenges. I thought, Qigong got to be something very simple and easy. It could not be that hard. While I was following the guidance of my master, and I was doing my own research, my own practice. And finally, I believe I found it. And Qigong, especially for healing others, it is so fast, even faster than you learn how to practice your meditation, moving up yin and yang, deep. Of course, if you want to go up to a higher level to experience that energy, you need to practice. Right? It's not like a one-time deal. 
So now how to when you want to do distance healing, there's two parts you need to learn. Then the first part is detecting. And then the second part is sending energy to perform healing. So the detecting, now here we are going to practice the detecting. The detecting, first of all, the things you need to do, we already talked about that, you break the barrier, what is called distance. Actually in the universe, there's a no distance at all. And that the things which makes the distance happen is because of your height, because of your understanding, because of your perception. If you think you are far away from your friend, even a little distance, you, if you don't have confidence, you can't do the work. If you feel you're so close to your friend, even if it's from the distance here between here to Mars, but there's no distance. The things make it distant or close is your heart. We often talk about this in Spring Forest Qigong. The most powerful healing energy is unconditional love. When you hold love within you, there is no distance between you and me, between you and your friend, between you and your family. No distance. So the first part is you love what you do, what you, what you do and you love what you can do to help others, bringing them joy and happiness. So that is the key. So love makes the distance away. Love makes the distance away. So up, after you have this mindset, you get yourself settled with this, now then you can go to the technical thing. When, when we work on, work on a person from distance, now here's again one more thing I want you to pay attention to. Each body has two bodies. One is called Yang body, the other is called Yin body. Yang is the physical body, Yin is, you might call it spirit, it is part of it. The Yin body has all the information from the past to nowadays. Even many, many circles of life back in the past. And it also has the information of this person's future. That's what the yin body has. So when you invite this person to come in front of you to uh, allow you to detect, actually you are working on this person's yin body. <coughs> you check out the information of this person. And this, this information has been existing there forever. And you need to ask the proper questions so that you are able to access that information to help you for healing. Some people have fears that if I make a mistake, what is going to happen? And at that time, I said the same thing to myself. If I make a mistake, if this is not true, what is going to happen? One day when I, when I did a reading on a person from distance, and I, 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 I scanned, then I, I said, well, you've got a problem in your left shoulder. And she said, no, I don't have anything in my left shoulder, but my right shoulder is hurting at this moment. 
I said, hmm, that's very interesting. I detect it again. I still found the blockages in the left side. So then I doubted whether this technique work or not, whether this is because of me or because of my ego or because of uh, you know, so my fears. And then a couple of weeks later, and this lady called me back. She said, I just came back from the hospital. I had a tumor in my left shoulder, which I did not know at all. But my right shoulder had the pain. So I said, wow, that is cool. You know? that, means that, that means I was right. You know? <laughs> so I gained a little confidence. Then I studied a little bit more about, about this detecting. Then I found out. Hello? You know, then I found out that the detecting, when you turn in so deeply, you are able to detect, to receive the information from so many high levels, so many deep levels of this person's history or situation of health. And this technique can help you to prevent things from happening way, way ahead of time. Recently, I talked to, well, so uh, not recently, an, uh, a CEO of a hospital has been with me for a couple of years. One thing she said to me, she stayed with me for that long as a CEO of a hospital, a chain hospital. She said, because one thing, one day she was in my talk in Washington DC. And I offer to my class, there's about like 50 people that I, during my break, and I was willing to do a scan for them. And she came up and I scanned her. I said, well, you need to pay, you need to pay attention to your right breast in the top of the right breast. I saw a, a, a strong energy blockage there. She said, well, so, okay, thank you so very much. And my breast was doing fine, it's doing fine. I just had a medical checkup one week ago and everything was perfect, thank you. And I said, well, um, I hope I am wrong. And uh, then we said goodbye. Six months later, he, she called me back. She said, Master Lin, I found out I had a cancer in my right breast, exactly at the point where you said, tell me what I need to do. I will do what you tell me 100%. And then I gave her my advice, and then without medication, and she was healing herself. And like that little spot is still there, but the doctor said, it was dead, not active at all, for since the time she was diagnosed to now, the day. So uh, this technique, when you turn in, you are able to find out the blockage hidden deep in the system before it becomes the surface. So when you detect, when you tell people you have a blockage here and there, the people said, I don't feel any discomfort in that part of the body. So now you should be no worry, right? No worry, because your chi can detect, can find out blockages hidden deep in the system, even a small one long before it comes out to trouble people. So open your, open your heart and accept it. 
And because this chi, another thing is like, uh, unconditional love. What you do, you do it from your heart for people. It's not from your ego. Not from your own amusement. <laughs> and uh, you do it from your heart. So with this mindset settled, now you can fly, you can have fun. When you are asked to help to detect an energy blockage for this person, now, first of all, you open your heart, you call upon the universal energy, you call upon your master's energy to help you. Whoever your master is, you call upon this master's energy to assist you to do a better job. And, and um, you, can, you can call, you can consider Jesus as your master. You can consider Buddha as your master. You can consider somebody is living, still living on this planet, but, but you have a very good connection with this person, and you call upon this people's energy to support you. That's the first one. And then after that, you relax yourself and you feel that tingly sensation in your hands before you start the detecting. And how can you feel that energy better than this? Uh, this is a, a trick there. This is my secret. <laughs> All right, now what you do is, you know, everybody please put up one hand. When you detect, you use one hand, right? You don't use two hands because right hand, what you put, the information you pick up is more like a vibration and the left hand is more like a temperature. So you use one hand and what you detect so that your mind can be more focused. You can do a better, better job. So open your hand, your fingers are slightly open All right, very good. Now, next is no. You don't stretch your, your fingers open like, like this, right? You see? Don't do it like this. When you stretch too much like this, you're not able to activate the sensor in your hand to detect. But hold your fingers like an oval size, like you're holding a ball. You see, uh, holding a ball with a little bit curve in the fingers. If you do it like this, no chi. <laughs> this is no chi. <laughs> and do it like this, it's over too much physical chi. So you do it like this. Then you can feel the chi flow in your hand, in your fingers, and you are able to activate the sensors in your hand. All right, you can put your hand down. And why you use your hand, not other part of the body there? Of course, the other part of the body can still do work for you. But our hand, or hands, fingers, are more sensitive. The reason of that is because our hand of our inner body, we have 12 major energy channels, the meridians. Four of them, I mean six in the hand, six in or start or end in the hand, and six start and end in the feet. Four of these channels are connecting directly to our heart. And these four, all these four channels, are all in our hand. Isn't that amazing? So actually when you use a hand to sense, you use a heart to communicate. That is it. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. right? So you use a heart to read a person's energy. You already give your heart to this person. At that moment. 
So, so this is the hand posture. And in order to activate your sensor better, you can do some cropping to your hands. Cropping, everybody. Shake it a little. All right, so then you feel more tingly sensation in your hands, right? So beautiful. Now with this preparation, then you can invite the yin body of your friend to come in front of you. You just visualize this person is in front of you. Or you can use a picture of this person if that helps you to bring or to help you to knock the distance away between you and that person. Now I think you know, so the internet is just so convenient, right? You can do FaceTime and, uh, uh, and uh, Skype and a webinar, you know, many, 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 many devices. And, uh, so I, I know just a little bit about that now, starting learning it because of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, in, in front of this person's picture, or you have the, the image of this person in your device, and then you can, you can scan. When you scan, you scan it from head to toe, just like what you are doing in level two. But you don't think this is a distance. There is no distance. I am in the universe. The universe is in my body. You and I just in front of each other. Especially out the yin body, you are, what you are detecting is that you are detecting information. You don't need that person in, in present you know, with you. You just access the information from the universe about this person's health situation. And then you scan from here. Now you need to ask yourself in your mind. You need to ask the right question. You don't say, is there anything going on in your body? Of course, a lot of things going on, right? <laughs> Cooking a dinner, buying a grocery, doing the laundry, and I'm thinking about my dog, and, and you see? Lots of things going on in the, in, in the mind, in, the, in, this, in this person's body. You ask, is there any energy blockage in your body? Or they say, any part of the body you have serious energy blockage. Or if something more specific is it, what part of the body there is a Blood, lead, blood leaking spot. Or you can ask, what is the exact location of the tumor? What's the exact location of the stone in the kidney? Upper part, lower part? And what is the main area you have an energy blockage I can focus on to help you more. Ask something very specific. And then your, your hand is going to pick that up for you. Your hand is an ultrasound hand. It's a radar hand. It has that sensor to help you to find out the information. My, uh, when I was teaching in Singapore uh, quite a few years ago, <coughs> then um, at, the, at the back of the room, sitting a Chinese man, all the time holding the arms like this and with the eyes closed. No matter what I talk, he never opened his eyes. <laughs> I said, I wonder, you know, if you don't make notes, if you don't ask questions, and even even you don't open your eyes, why do you want to come to my class? 
what is the value? You can simply just stay home and take a nap, you know, then have a smoke, right? So, but anyway, I allow things to happen, but it, it's, even during the break, and he was just sitting over there. It looks to me, you know, he had no bladder at all. <laughs> so uh, then, when we finished, uh, in the late afternoon, everybody was gone. He was still remaining in the chair. And then he stood up, he shook hands you know, with me. I said, hey, Master, Master Chen Yulin, you know, thank you so much for coming here, here to this world. I just want to come to meet you. And then he told me he was an MD in Hong Kong. And he told me even more stories. Once he opened, oh my gosh, you know, so I was hungry, but he was not. <laughs> he was talking, talking, talking. And uh, he told me so many stories. And he was a surgeon in a hospital. He used the spin forest qigong technique, detecting the blockage in his patient's body before he operated. And he said, it worked. He said, I never told my colleagues what I was doing <laughs> because by law, I could not do it. And he said he literally saved his sister's life on the operating table by finding that blockage. Because in an emergency, the, all the doctors was not able to find out what was wrong in her sister's body. And he did not know by using all the devices he had in hospital, he was not. And his sister was dying. And then he scanned <laughs> when nobody around. That's what he said. He scanned and he found that blockage. And he, <clears throat> he told his colleague, work on this part. And they did. And his sister's life saved. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, the, the tingly sensation in your hand, and like in what you have in level two, and I say if you know nothing about level two, and I will encourage you to go get the level two uh, course to read the information and about the feeling you have in your hand. And we're going to practice. I'll give you a little time to practice just in a couple minutes. And then the other thing is, you know, your hand is the device, but the information you pick up to tell you there is an energy blockage in the body could be in any other place. Could be in your tongue, could be the feeling under your arm, could be the feeling in your stomach, in your gut can be in your feet, can be in your nose, can be in your ears. So in my level two, I, 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 I share a, a, a story with my friend. So one day when I was, de when I was uh, doing the uh, teaching on level two, detecting energy blockage, there was a gentleman from out of the state and said, uh, called me and said, now Chen Yi, come over, come over. And this is where things happen. And I said, and was, what? Now look at this. Anytime when I scan a person, in, when I found the blockage, I didn't feel anything at all in my hand. But my left leg jump. <laughs> Fun, huh? And then he said, you know, so can, what is going on? You know, so can, what, what, what am I going to do with this? And I said, well, you, something very simple, and you just don't jump too high. <laughs> so that's his sensor. Then in another class, this lady told me, anytime, no matter when she was detecting face-to-face -face or long distance, her left ear flap. <laughs> if there's energy blockage, flap. And flap more, and that means a stronger blockage. And little, that means a small blockage. 
I think that makes her life much easier, right? <laughs> so, uh, so you look for this reaction, especially when you go deeper and deeper, and more channels, wisdom channels, I call it, in your body open. You're going to have all these beautiful senses get activated. Some cool stuff get activated in your system, and enjoy it. Don't be afraid. That is you. Because of this, it makes you so special. It makes you so single out from what you are doing. Right. So then, after you get the information, you trust. Next step, you trust this information. You trust this message. Again, this message could be this, the, uh, this person is having the challenge now. It could be the challenge which is going to come in the near future. And you pick it up from a very deep level. So you trust it. If this person say, no, I don't have uh, any, uh, any um, the, a negative feeling in that part of the body, fine. Then you can send energy. Send your love, send your chi to help to balance that energy in time, so that this person, your family, your boy, your pet, will not have that suffering in the future. Got it? Beautiful. All right. So now we're going to practice the detective. Right? So everybody, please put your hand up, one hand, and do this posture with me. Gently. So move your hand from side to side slowly. All right. We practice the posture first. All right. so again, from the head down to the chest, slowly and to the hips, to the knee. All right, so very good. Now I'm going to give you. A couple people's names, and I want you to help me to find out what blockage he or she has. Okay, so now I want you to detect uh, a dog. My Jody. I have a little dog. We adopted it uh, from San Diego four years ago when we were doing. Uh, Level five healing, I mean, level five uh, re, uh, retreat, and she nowhere, you know, we nobody could figure it out. In the morning, when we opened the door, and she was sitting right on the table. Uh, that was a little chihuahua, uh, and she was dehydrated. You know, my wife looked at it, looked at it, looked at it, and. She was looking at my wife, and uh, again. <laughs> then <laughs> she, oh, yeah, she got <laughs> electrocuted, and uh, then she uh, came to, came to talk to me. I said, "My dear husband, can we bring her back?" You know, so I said, "No, you know, we're so busy traveling and a lot of things. You know, it's it's a baby, you know, so uh, we uh, we don't have the time." He said, "Oh, please." <laughs> then I said. If you really want it, okay, you know. So again, I want to bring it, bring her home for Crystal, our daughter. Okay, so um, I just yeah, yeah, she she has, she she's such an intelligent and, and cute dog. You know, so I, I now I just fall in love with her. Um, so I want you to help me to find out is there energy energy blockage with her. Chihuahua. Chen Yin Lin is Chihuahua. <laughs> All right, so rub your hands and clear the information from your previous detecting. And grab your hands. All right. So. Okay, so now you invite the yin body of Chihuahua, of Chen Yin Lin, right in front of you. And now you scan from the head. Down the mouth, 
the nose, the brain, the neck, the throat, the arms, legs, paws, and the tail, the spine, the front legs, the back legs. All right, take a deep breath. Okay. Now you tell me what my little Chihuahua has any blockage in her. Yes? Well, something in the right ear down, follows down and into the shoulder. Someone is, something is right, right uh, jaw, right neck, ears, and down to the shoulder, okay? A tooth. A tooth, all right? You pick up the tooth. Yes? Something in the head, all right? Uh huh. Uh huh. The spine. You know, so you pick up something, the spine. Okay. Yes. Something in the paws. Something in the paws. Okay. Yes. In the throat. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else? Anything serious? Yeah, nothing serious. Okay. Out the hip. All right. All right. Good. Good. Okay. Well, so I think uh, you are you are right. And she had a tooth problem, and lots of lots of pain, and in the in 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 the in the tooth, and so guys, she also had a little. Uh, because of the, of, of the infection from the uh, many many of the teeth, and uh, so she had a little bit of swallowing situation, and her lower back and close to the uh, the the the, uh, the the right side of the leg, uh, there's like, you know, one little bone is a looser looser lo it's, a, it's a kind of a looser, and in and out in and out. So uh, sometimes you know she walks with the with the, some pain, and uh, so uh, the, and uh, that's what what we are working on her. Um, the other part of the body she is doing great. That's it. You see, you pick up right and the tooth. They got the head and uh, the shoulders. They got the living the throat. See, isn't that amazing? And you you, you even don't. See, don't, 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 don't see my little chihuahua at all. <laughs> you are able to detect. All right? Yes? How do you clear, when you, you know, you said you had a dog, how do you clear from your mind other, my dog had an incident, I have a little tiny dog, uh -huh. a poodle, and all I could feel was my, I couldn't get to your chihuahua from my toy poodle. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Okay. <laughs> you know, because it was a big dog and she, she just went crazy uh -huh. and uh, scared uh -huh. and limping. And, <laughs> uh, okay. So, so how do you clear that? Yeah. You to focus on something else? The uh, now the question is, you know, can and uh, our friend here, you know, she has uh, a dog. The dog is bigger than Chihuahua, right? Mm -hmm. She's uh, four pounds. Uh, yeah, four pounds. Oh, probably about. The, <laughs> about the same size. <clears throat> and but her dog has like some other challenges. <clears throat> you know how how can she when detecting an energy blockage clear? Uh, the image of uh, her own dog to detect the, the blockage in others' dog. Um, you just say at this moment, you just think, no, I want to detect Chunyin Lin's Chihuahua. So that is in your reader, okay. in your mind. That's good enough. That's good enough. Right? <clears throat> yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You visualize it's a very big one, right? So, yeah, now here, and uh, congratulations to you, and you break through 
the word is called distance or the size. Now what is the big size? What's the small size? So once you are in the universe, the universe is that big or that small? It's all about your possession in your mind. So when you break through that, you can... Now this is another cool thing. When you develop more, this is what I do. If, a, uh, if, if, if the dog is you know, the small one, I just like what you do in your computer, you know, you have the small picture and you click it and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. So uh, I just put that little chihuahua, put it in the sky, that big. Then I read the energy. And by using this technique, you're e even able to analyze a person's health, for instance. Ah, and uh, there's a, a, a and the degeneration going on in the spine. And second, what in detail that degeneration going in that part of the spine? So then you see the spine, the spine is about that, that much, right? In this part, and then you enlarge it. And then you say, ah, this exact area, number four, number five, or the left side, you know, in the middle, and the sides, and you can literally have that vision. Just it's it's much better than X-ray. It's a three D picture, seeing. So at that time when I when I uh, listened to my master talking about this three D vision in your meditation, the thought I, <clears throat> which we are uh, we, we're going to do in level four next year, uh, the thought I training. Um, <clears throat> he he said, you know, you are able to. When you thought I really developed, you're able to see the image. It's much better than an X-ray. It's a 3D image of something. Whatever you want to, you just want to have this person, the, the, the spine to turn around and it can show the, the whole thing from the front, from the sides, and from the back, and whatever you want to. And I thought, well, is that possible? You know? So until one day, when I got deep in meditation, the first thing I saw is my own lungs. The lungs is just as big, it's bigger than the size of this room. I saw it was just like, you know, you go to the IMED theater, in the theater to see the, the 3D uh, movie with the, with the glasses on. It is just like that. It's even more beautiful. You can see everything in a very fine detail. What is going on inside? So what you are doing? You know, you are in. You you are already one step ahead. <laughs> Open your heart. So uh, I think that's that's great. So thank you for sharing that. All right. So I think you know, I uh, took more than what I. Uh, plan to share with you for today. So congratulations for your d detecting. And if this is the first time, you know you experience this, and so congratulations, congratulations to you. If this is the second time or more times, and we have a lot of uh, advanced uh, Spring Forest Qigong students here, and open your heart more and practice, practice. You know that will make you perfect. Yes. I still have pain in my left hip from that lady in my <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She says she still has the pain, you know, in the left hip from that lady's detecting, you know, what, what, what you can do, right? Yes. I mean, then you can say one word, my body is my body, your body is your body, and uh, so can, uh, and whatever you have, and that's your body. Yeah. yeah. All right, then you're, then you're fine. Okay, so now we're going to do a healing meditation. So uh, I want you to stand up and bounce the body. And we're going to bounce the body for uh, a few minutes. For those who want to take this uh, a few minutes to take care of yourself, an urgent need, and you can go. Uh, you can go take care of yourself. When you bounce, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And focus on your knees.
And while you are bouncing, you notice that every part of the body is right here with you. And you are aware of that. Okay, so you hold your hands above your head. Let go with the wrist and continue to bounce. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. down. Okay, so now stand and I want you to tap your tailbone. And tap the hip joints. And massage your temples. And activate these energy points connecting internally so that you are able to activate more chi to help you in the meditation for healing, for balancing. All right, so cut the top of the head and the base of the head. All right, so beautiful. Okay, take a seat, please. Guided meditation is about like 20 minutes or so. And while I'm doing the guided meditation, and at the same time, I'm sending you healing energy to help you with the healing. Um, so those people, you know, when, as soon as you hear the word healing, sending energy, you might wonder, oh boy, so those people in front might get more energy than I do sitting in the back. You know? <laughs> so here I'm going to do a finger growing game with you. And to tell you, no matter where you are, once you're in this room, there's no distance between you and me at all. So, uh, put up one hand. <clears throat> I want you to find the first line in the bottom of their palm. And then go to the other hand. You find the same line. And uh, then match these two lines together. <clears throat> and slowly close your hands and see which hand your fingers is longer or shorter. All right, do it one more time. Compare your hands. So now, if you have uh, 
one hand, your fingers are a little bit shorter than the other, than the other ones. So put up your shorter, shorter fingers. If they're the same length, put up either one of your hand. That will do. Okay, so put the other hand down. One hand up. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send out Chi to help you to make your fingers longer. Okay, compare your hands. Right? Cool? <laughs> okay, so then now you, you know, no matter where you are sitting, you are going to receive the same amount of chi from me. Right? So no worry, be happy. <laughs> okay, so now when you are ready, close your eyes. Drop your shoulders. and put a smile on your face. And focus on your lower dantian, the energy center behind the navel. And you visualize there is a beautiful light shining right there in your lower dantian. Now you scan your body from head to toe that you are aware every part of your body is right here with you sitting in a chair. <coughs> and then you notice your mind your heart and your spirit are so connected to your physical body. And you feel so grounded, so connected. Then you call upon your master's energy to help you in this meditation for healing or for any purpose you have in your mind. You can say, my master, I love you so much. Please send me your chi, your wisdom and your guidance to help me to heal my cancer, to help me to heal my arthritis to help me to heal my depression or anything completely. As I am healed, I'm going to share a lot of joy, happiness, healing, and peace with my family, with my community, and even the world. And I thank you. that you feel the tingly sensation in your hands, in your body. Once you feel the tingly sensation, the warmth or any feeling, that means you are connected to your master's chi. Then you say the password to connect you to the universe by saying aloud in your heart, I am in the universe. The universe is in my body. The universe and I combine together. Take a moment to feel that your body and the universe are merging together as one.
since you already told your master, the universe, what you want, healing yourself with this and that challenge, now you can let go with that message. Put it aside and simply just focus your moment, how you feel in your hands, in your arms, in your lungs, how you feel with your breath. Now the first things we're going to do to help you to strengthen your vitality center. Every bit of the energy you need to support you with the healing, with any anything you are doing as a purpose, is from this area. That's the lower dantian. So now you inhale, visualizing the universal chi light coming in through your skin running through every cell and gathering together in your navel, the lower dantian. You feel you are sucking in the energy through your skin. When you exhale, just visualize light shooting out from every part of your body to the ends of the universe. Then you inhale again, slowly visualizing the universal chi light coming in through your skin and collapsing your lower dantian. And when you exhale, invite any energy blockages you don't need in your body anymore. This is as an extra energy, changing into smoke shooting out from your skin to the ends of the universe. Your body looks like a, a star shining. And you continue to breathe in this way, gently and slowly, with no judgment. You open yourself to the divine, to the universe. You allow the universal energy, you allow the intelligence inside your body to help you to clear any wrong information negative chi, changing them into smoke shooting out from your skin to the ends of the universe. Catch the moment to feel, to notice that your navel, your lower stomach is getting warmer or tingly sensation. That is the secret of Qigong practice. When you focus on this feeling, feeling the tingly sensation inside you, you are activating the intelligence, the consciousness of Qi to help you. This intelligence and Qi has all the information to help you to restore your health completely. Now, so I want you to bring your focus to one area in your body where you have a challenge. Maybe a bone spurt, maybe a tumor. If you have uh, anger, you focus on your liver. If you have a depression, you focus on your lungs. If you have a sadness, you focus on your lungs. If you have fears, you focus on your kidneys. So now, what I want you to do, focus on that particular part of your body and breathe. Now you inhale, you visualize the universal light, wisdom, together with the light coming in 
gathering together in that particular part of the body, making that particular part of the body so warm, even hot, feel it's like a sun burning very hot inside. This is the love from the universe helping you to transform that energy blockage into something beautiful. And do it. this is happening now. When you exhale, you visualize that blockage changing into butterflies, changing into smoke, shooting out and returning back to the universe, back to the nature as extra energy. Then you continue to inhale and exhale in this way, focusing on that beautiful, warm, hot sensation in that particular part of the body. So this is another secret of Qigong practice. You focus on that part of the body without any judgment, sending a lot of light with the heat, transforming that energy blockage in the light of love, in the light of confidence, in the light of intelligence, transforming it into butterflies, into smoke, shooting out from every part of the body, returning back to the nature, returning back to the universe, and you say goodbye to it. So goodbye, my butterflies. Thank you so much for all these days and nights staying with me, helping me, guiding me to this moment to enlighten my life. Now I am back in the right track of my life. It is time for you to go back to the universe. You already finished your duty. You already finished your job, helping me, guiding me back to the right track of my life. I appreciate you. I love you. Now I want you to return back to the universe. Then you see in the light, this butterfly is so happy flying back to the nature, back to their home. And you're so happy that finally they got a chance to go home. Now you feel with all these butterflies going away, your body is getting lighter and lighter and lighter still. You feel that you have more room in your body now for joy, for happiness, for love. And you appreciate you even more. You feel so good about yourself. Then you look deeper inside that part of the body. It's so clear, crystally clear. In the light, now you picture yourself from this moment on, you're going to live a healthy and happy life. Picture yourself, you're going home, laughing with your family, having so much joy with your friend, traveling in the world without your cane, without any aches and pains, without any concerns. That is the life you want to live. You program yourself in that way. And now you bring yourself back to the focus again. Inhale, visualizing the universal light, universal chi with the intelligence coming in to centralize in that particular part of the body you're focusing on. Exhale, you visualize the blockage 
all changing into smoke, shooting out of your body, returning back to the universe. You continue to breathe in this way. You continue to feel that I am in the universe. The universe is in my body. The universe and I combine together. see many of you, your auras are changing. You are really getting so dear with this chi. Your intelligence are really got awakening up. Deep healing is really taking place within you. And you trust that moment. And you trust yourself. coming to the end of this meditation. Gently you bring your focus back to your lower Dantian. You see the light shining in your lower Dantian so beautifully. You feel how calm you feel. How wonderful you feel. See the light as an energy ball in your lower dantian, spinning, spinning, spinning. In the light of this light ball, you scan your body from head to toe one more time, that all the channels are open. And how wonderful you feel. Then you see the light becomes an energy pill and you tuck it deep in behind the navel. Say thank you to your master, to the universe for all their support in this meditation. Take three gentle deep breaths. Now open your eyes and rub your hands together. and massage your face. And cup your head. And massage your ears. All right, so that's beautiful. Okay, that's the end of the meditation.
Um, thank you so very much. So we're going to take a break uh, for how many minutes? The break. The break is fifteen minutes. And before the uh, healing yeah. circle. Yeah. Uh, okay. Actually, that's over time. Yeah. So the break is five minutes. <laughs> 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 but I, I just want to mention. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. I got flowers, so thank you for your flowers, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.